Hi friends! Today the lesson is about orange and how to interpret orange. I went around my house and I found several different oranges for us to work together and figure it out. This is obviously orange. This is a more duller kind of orange. This pineapple here is also orange. This is also orange and this liquid is orange. How are we going to interpret all that? What about this guy? It holds my incense. It's also orange. And then I found this thing. This part is orange. Let's paint this together. I'm going to show you my palette, the few oranges that I have, and let's go to work. All right, friends, here is my palette. And this line over here are my oranges. Brighter oranges, duller oranges. This is raw sienna, burnt sienna, and this is burnt umber. You will see as you continue studying with me that burnt umber can be a yellow as well, and then also can be a red. When we go into studying reds and then all the other colors here, my blues, my greens, but this is a different lesson. Let's stick to these oranges and Let's start interpreting all these guys, shall we? <laughs> I hope you enjoy this class. Cheers once more. And why we don't start with the obvious oranges? I'm going to start with this orange here, which is a very light. And another thing, guys, it's always important to remember that when we paint, we also compare. It's always important to know the surrounding of your object because that stipulates how light or how dark it is against its surroundings. And how lovely it is to have all these objects that we can compare. This is brighter than this one, and this is darker and duller than nothing else. <laughs> this is my darkest and duller piece. This is also orange. Look, but how neat all these reflections and how duller and almost like going into whatever color this is. We'll figure it out. So why we don't start with the most obvious ones, which are this light orange over here and the... the pineapple. But let's start by studying the color wheel because I even have my notes always hanging because when I paint, I'm always asking these four questions over here. Do I have the setting where you can see the questions? Uh, no. <laughs> so what color do I see? It always needs to be one of these. And I actually make it even easier. I only ask for the six primary colors or the six main colors, which is the yellow, the orange, the red, the violet, the blue, and the green. It needs to be one of these six. Yeah, they are never going to be this obvious, especially when you're painting neutral things like uh, fur and dogs and such. But they're always a variation of one of these six. It makes it easy to figure it out because you don't have a dog color on your palette and you don't have a pineapple color on your palette. You have just a few oranges and then you interpret. That's part of what I want to teach you. And so today we are going to stick with these oranges and I'm going to look at my orange on my palette and I see that I have one that is very similar to that color that I see there. So do I need to mix it with anything? Hmm. Maybe not. But if I do, I will, I will. And I can lighten up oranges with yellows. I can lighten oranges with yellows. I go up a color and I make it lighter. Now, I'm going to start with this color here because that's what I see and that's the color I want to start. Every 
anything else, it's pretty much going to be adjusted according to this first one here. And maybe I will have to make this one a little bit lighter even. But right now, as the color that I see on my palette and I look at that, it's pretty much perfect. Uh, I will add a little bit of white. Let me lighten it up just a tad, just a tad. So I'm putting white on this orange and then I see orange on this side too. I will also add more information to these pieces as we go, okay? I'm going to be covering a little bit on the values that we incorporate to a to anything you paint so that you can create dimension and form. You can make it look three-dimensional. So that's a good start. That's a little orange. Are you guys back? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, if you rotate my, it slows. Okay. Let me see. What did you say? Uh, Dom, if I rotate my screen, it shows you upside down. <gasps> Are you guys, uh, so tell me more. Are, are you being able to see this okay? Uh, horizontal, or is it too small? Ah. Guys, let's, uh, let's keep doing this. I'm going to get a larger brush because I don't want to spend a lot of time with the baby brush on a larger area. And I think this orange is very, very similar to the one on the little bowl. And so I'm just going to fill in this area that I see. And I call this blocking in. This is the mother color, let's say. We add the we add the main color that we see, and then we incorporate the shadows and cast shadows, and we make it look round. And we are going to make this look like a, like a pineapple. But for now, let's just block in these main colors we see. I see orange, I see a bright orange, and it's light. And so reviewing the questions that I have here on my easel. It says, what color do I see? It's orange. And then what tone? Is it light or is it dark compared to its surrounding? And then the intensity, is it bright or is it dull? And then the fourth question is the hue of the color. Is it going towards what? Is it going towards yellow? Is it going towards red? Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. So you know what color I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna do the flower back there because I do have that exact orange because the main flower on the front is more like yellow. And so I'm just gonna go into this darker orange that I have. Look at that, it's perfect. And I'm going to add a few very light indication of these petals with this other orange that I have. It's a darker, reddisher, <laughs> more brighter orange. And, and this flower goes all the way down here. Haven't cleaned the brush. Look at that. I usually do the same to all my paintings. I always block in first. I don't spend too much time thinking about the details, just the overall color everywhere. And then I come back and that's when I start building on the, 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 all the other shapes. I put in darker darks and lighter lights. So that's, you know, even my rhythm of application with my brush, 
I wanted it to make it very loosey loosey. And I also see some of this flower back here through the glass. So let's add that there. Good. Goody, 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 goody. So that's my flower area. And now we are going to do what? Let's work on this little guy here. It's a duller light orange. What's a dull orange that I have on my palette? Is the raw sienna, right? I'm going to take a look here. I found you. Hey, Marianne. Welcome back. Mommy, welcome back. Okay, so let's think of this duller orange over here. I have raw sienna, but my raw sienna straight out from the tube is too dark. I'm going to add white to lighten up my raw sienna and I'm eyeballing it. And I'm pretty sure this is very, very accurate color representation for this duller orange fox. There you go. Yeah, that's a great color, isn't it? And with every painting, we start by doing the best we can in this stage. And at one point, we continue elaborating and perhaps even repainting a few areas. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the storming. Little paw. Uh, so blocking in first, and then we come back and we create dimension. We create dimension by incorporating other values. Darker darks, lighter lights, all these. Uh, this is a little darker over here. I don't want to mess with the tail for now. Let's get my, my brush dirty. Okay, so that's the overall little face of this orange over here. And now I'm going to do this dark orange, which is I can't wait to do my burnt sienna. And I think if I add burnt sienna straight from the tube, it's the exact color. Let's block that in too. So yeah, now I learned something new today. I cannot turn my phone while I'm filming, but I started horizontal and it, it allowed me to, to start. So blocking in this little guy and, and then we will go one by one and do some, some beauty fine on it. Yeah. Okay, that's a great color. What about the liquid on the bottle? It's also orange and it's dull, but it almost has a little bit more color. I'm going to go into my raw sienna again. But I also think look, uh, it's darker than this guy. Mm -hmm. And it has more orange. And so I'm going to add some burnt sienna to my I'm going to add burnt sienna to my raw sienna and I'm going to darken this with my burnt sienna and raw sienna, okay? Yep, yep, yep. I think it's a good a good start. So we are going to paint this liquid in here and then the bottle ends where it, I'm just gonna make it end here 
doesn't matter. We are studying color. And so I'm reloading my brush with burnt sienna and raw sienna for the liquid. So that's the basic color. That's my mother color. And then we do all the other yummy, nice things. And now this guy over here, what orange is this? I think I see burnt umber. It's also orange. It's also yellow. People are going to debate with me about it. I have been studying color for so long. No single artist sticks to one. Every artist I see tells burnt umber is red. Other people say burnt umber is orange. Burnt umber is yellow. I kid you not. And so I use burnt umber at the end of all my colors. I use burnt umbers at the end of all yellows. I use burnt umber at the end of, uh, of the oranges. And I'm going to, and I use burnt umber at the end of reds. <laughs> exactly. And so, burnt umber is a very important color to have on your palette. And I think I like that as the base for this thing. And then I'm going to do this here. I see a little bit of red on the side. It's like it's almost pink, which is what? I'm going to put some white on this burnt sienna that I have. And look at that. Perfect color. Perfect color. Variations of orange. Right? Amazing. I love to paint metal. Good, 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 good. So, and then I have this really strong highlight right here in the middle. I want to keep it. Mm -hmm. Let me make a line here. And then I'm going to add a very, very light pink there to the middle, which is the highlight. I'm just going to go with white. And yes, I could go into the red, but I'm just going to make a really light burnt sienna right here. That's the highlight. Yeah. Nice. Ah, there you go. So now we do what? We continue um, improving and sculpt and I'm going to pick one to continue working on and I think now I'm gonna go from the back to the front and I'm gonna add that yellow flower so obviously I'm gonna have to touch my yellows it's a color yellow, it's a tone, it's a, a medium tone, and it's not, the intensity is medium also. It's not a bright yellow nor a dull yellow. Dull yellow is a yellow ochre, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix yellow ochre with my medium yellow. I'm just going to mix these two yellows and add this flower over here. I think this is good. And so just add this flower there with a bright yellow. And again, guys, I'm just giving myself a layer that then I can work on. So this is all just like basic, basic blocking in. And I'm going to block in this middle of the flower is a, like a duller, shiny little thing. Okay, good. Now I'm going to add, what about we add a little bit of these um, pineapple green things. 
<laughs> <laughs> the leaves of the pineapple. So obviously, what color do I see? I see green. And I see a medium value green. And I see it's um, yellowish green. It's a warm green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add yellow to the green. And I'm going to add a little bit of white because I want it to be light and yellowish. And I'm going to just use the rhythm of application like this and make leaves in this direction. Like that. Lots of leaves. There you go. And then here, I also see just the little ends. I should block in the back, but I just want to do this. So you see how the brush does all the work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need a little bit darker greens in the between. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up like that. Just show a little bit of this these guys so that then I can fill it up correctly and when you I'm doing this really really quick guys only because I want to just give it a little bit of making it fun but also focus on the orange lesson okay so there you go filling in some of these guys Blocking in mother color. And then, yeah, that goes all the way up. Oh, fun, 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 fun. At one point, we can really make it leafy. So, before anything else, we're going to make this rounder. And as this goes around the corner it gets a little darker so I'm just gonna hit the next darker orange that I have and I'm going to add this darker area here and I'm gonna make it round and then I also have a little darker area there and then I have these uh, these darker areas there cast shadowing the leaves in order to do the these indentations of the of the pineapple you can spend quite a bit of time doing each one little by little like a like that and if you want to paint a pineapple like real realistic, then take your time in all these little guys here. There. And then I'm going to add a little bit of cast shadow right here. I'm going to make this shadow more violetly. How do I make violet? Usually I mix I mix uh, ultramarine blue and I mix crimson. That's a good nice shadow color. Uh, so I have that and then I'm just going to go ahead and continue adding this cast shadow here. And then I'm just going to use the same, you know, the cast shadow for these guys are all going to be the same color. Why? 
because the cast shadow is not the color of the object. The cast shadow is the color of where the shadow is casting on. And so because I have this white fabric, all the cast shadow is going to be purplish. And so I'm going to mix a little bit more purplish color here. I think it has a little bit of cast shadow here. And then there's the little pause. And then this guy has some cast shadow. Yeah, so remember that the cast shadow is where the shadow is casting on. It's not the color of the object. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. All right. Cool, 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 cool. And now we can do this little glass thing. If you guys are still with me, still having some fun, and then I will continue painting this just a little bit more. I, the color I see is black. I see black for this lid. And so I am mixing black with white. And then the top of it is a little bit lighter. And so I'm just putting more white on the on the black and I'm making a lighter gray. And I'm going to go back with a little darker side here. If you start with pure black, then you can't go darker. So choose like a mid-tone. And I'm going to just use this same mixture that I used for the for the uh, for the cast shadow, and I'm going to make this glass contour right here. Mm -hmm. And then I have the background that's coming through. Let me make a. this area here which is more towards yellow see how easy it is i think it's easy you just look at the color and you ask the question go on your palette and pick the colors that you see mm -hmm. and so since the background of this bottle is the table I should add something dark to it on the back so that then I can put the highlight. And I'm just going to use, uh, I'm just going to go with the same mixture. The table is kind of like a dark. Let me see if this color is good. That's a good color. I mix burnt umber and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to add that there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I see behind the bottle. Just a dark reddish color. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to give it dimension. And we can add a beautiful highlight to this bottle. Okay. And then I have a little bit of the, of this, a little indentation there. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, all the, the labels. So we can spend quite a bit of time here doing this. It's just so fun. Let me add this label here. And I add the label here. And then I have the cork which is a light yellowish color, yellow, uh, dull yellow. It's yellow ochre. So I'm just going to add that there. That's the 
quirk. Mm-hmm. Now we can add details till we die. <laughs> Just add, add, add stuff. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So make this ball shine. We can add what are other colors I see? I see a more yellowish, uh, yellowish, grayish color right here is the thickness of the glass what's a yellowish grayish yeah that's exactly it add the yellow to black and i'm going to put a super super bright little area there that i see i'm going into my lightest yellow there and there and I see a little bit of that there and now we're just gonna go ahead and indicate some of these shiny areas here it has a highlight it's coming it's right there in the middle Oof. right there where else I see some highlight there I see a highlight coming down. I see some highlights. I think that highlights are, you can only have one highlight per customer. If you add too many informations, it uh, starts getting confusing. You don't need to put all the little bitty things everywhere you see, just make it See one highlight per cu per customer, and I want to make this highlight a little bit bigger. There. Woo! Very good. Now let's move into this little guy here. I have indentations on the this is the circle on the circle. I can go lighter and I can go darker. With three values, I can pretty much interpret anything. So I'm just going to go lighter here. I'm going to put more white on this same color, the burnt sienna, where I see lighter. And I also see lighter over here. And there's the little hole. And I can go darker in some areas. I can go darker here as it it's darker. Mm -hmm. And now we do the highlights. It's just a quick indication of these things. And I see the light striking here. I leave oh, all these little indentations get a little highlight a little bit here too all right and now this little guy switching brushes again I have a darker border and I'm gonna add that here and I'm gonna add that here and I'm going to make it just a little bit darker here, this thing. You can spend so much time improving on, on the three-dimensional, add little those, these darker areas like the shadows, it makes it turn. There you go. And uh, again, we have a little light there and a little light there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need a smaller brush for the uh, white of this, of these, um, of the fox. Let's uh, incorporate, I think this is, my brush was dirty. I'm going to pick this white for the eyes here, but I'm going to make it more grayish. And yeah, 
it's a very very light gray just for now I have little whites here on the ears and then there's the chest I'm going to use the same little grayish area the chest is smaller than what I have here but I kind of like the shape of my little guy <laughs> and now I'm going to oh there's a, a little darker gray down here which is the jaw mm -hmm. and then this area is casting shadow so we make it a little bit darker there and there and the tail is uh, it's a mixture again of burnt umber and burnt sienna and that's what I'm doing I'm just mixing burnt sienna and burnt umber and I get this color easy 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 at least this is a great start when you do your paintings you can always come back and then improve and add more drama and add more information so that's the it's a good um, shape for the tail but I want to make it turn like this let me put a little bit more color here it turns there and it goes around there and we can make it a little bit darker here and there okay and then the little paws it's a darker gray the color you see that's one paw that's one paw and then there's a little smaller one back there okay better switch brushes just to add a little face to the sky let me look let me look this is a good brush and I'm going to go with a burnt sienna I'm gonna add little eyes here and I add a little eye there and then the little nose I'm just gonna go with black the nose <laughs> oh how cute all right very quickly very quickly friends and then this one is has a gray top so let's just go ahead and I see gray mm, what's gray it's not one of the six colors that I it's uh, gray is a blue and so when black is blue when you when you mix it you think it's gray but it's on the bluish family yeah all right and then it's darker back here darker there and I can make it even darker uh-huh and then uh, there's an, another mid-tone gray over here we don't need to complicate stuff too much especially for a just a, a quick lesson like that it's just very very quick very very quicky thing and then here we are going to add these peppers they are burnt sienna uh, burnt umber burnt umber over here and I'm going to add a touch of black to tone down this brown make it duller and 
And so I mess in again a, a main t tone for that. And then I can go in with these, uh, the part that's back there. And because it's glass, I see the orange of the, of the pineapple. And so I need to put the pineapple over here. Mm -hmm. And then the pineapple turns this way too, so we can make it darker there on the turn. And then what's back there, it's some of this flower. Let's add the flower there, flower color. All right, beautiful. And this highlight continues here. And we can keep adding lots of details and make another sitting with more info. Yes, there. And the flowers, oh, the flowers. What's darker than orange is red. And so I'm just gonna go with my darker red and, and add some petals here and create some dimension on this flower. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Good that I'm doing this first. And then I can still put the bottle in front. So. So that's one flower. Yes, you can uh, go like a super, super detailed and make every petal like a curving correctly but I'm not going to do this it's not a flower lesson and now we have some darker yellows in here let's make darker yellows just create some dimension there and then we can have super lighter yellows where the light strikes. And then we can make these little petals in around the thing. <laughs> and then we can make uh, some, some shadow here. And yeah, wow. That's good. That's good for one hour big sitting. And um, mm -hmm. let me see if you guys are still here with me. Oh, Diane, thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here. So quick lesson on orange. This was fun. Look at that. Oh, I'm looking at the screen now. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. So, oh, yeah, let me do one more thing. I want to finish the bottle in front of the flower. So let's stick with our gray. And we are going to make this glass go in front. There. And we can even have the label back there. It's gray or blue. It's picking up the red, obviously. It's okay. Let me make it darker. And then I'm going to make the label on this side too. This is when painting in acrylics will be an advantage because all this will be dry. Or you're going to have to wait. Wait a day or two until your, your painting, uh, your, your colors dry and then you can 
paint more and put it on off. This is the label going around. So you can be super detailed or not. And uh, yeah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Do you guys love it too? I hope so. Oh, I picked the wrong green. Wait a minute. I pick. I'm going to have to work with a larger brush to create these leaves correctly. Rhythm of application. We should, uh, let's see here. I need to be a bigger brush. I'm trying to show you something, but if I use the wrong brush, it's not going to work. Okay, so these smaller leaves are good like that. And now I'm going to go with my larger brush because I want to do some of these here. So we have to do the ones that are inwards first and then work on the other ones on top. there. I'm mixing just like greens right now. Greens with white, greens with, with uh, other greens. All right. Yeah, you can add as many little leaves as, as you want. Or you can look at your model <laughs> and make it super accurate. Yeah, this is obviously squished. I don't have enough space to make it really pretty with all the... But the lesson wasn't about leaves, right? Or flowers, for that matter. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Let me go with a lighter orange here and make it some of these a little bit more. Well, thank you so much, my friends. 